Welcome to the Glitter Boom Girls podcast. I'm Robbie Ann McPherson on the East Coast. And I'm Amy Asbury on the West Coast. We are two authors who discuss nostalgia, everything from the 70s and 80s. If it happened then, we talk about it. And today, we are talking about not the songs, not the TV shows, but the stuff that happens in between. The commercials. Right, Amy? Loved commercials. I loved commercials. Did you see them as a time to go get cereal, or what did you think of them? You know, I saw them as if it was Saturday morning I I stayed I was watching because it was like toys and cereal and you know it was all geared toward me if it was late at night um Mm -hmm. I might I might get up like you know mom is yelling from the other room oh no Robbie you better get to bed you know and so during the commercial I would like run and change into my jammies and then come back and then the and next that, commercial, that was the liquor and the liquor and right, cigarette right. commercials like the back grown then. up stuff, cars, yeah, totally, that kind of stuff. yeah. But but the um, the fast food ads, mm. which showed during the day or like you know between after school and dinner time, which is when I was watching, or Saturday mornings when I was watching, um, I remember those. And the of course the thing that made the big impact on me was the jingles and the songs. Um, how about I you? I love that. I love the songs. Um, I remember loving the gum songs, like Big Red. <laughs> so kiss a little longer, do not a little longer. And then Something Juicy longer, Fruit. Longer what was Big the Red. Juicy Fruit jingle? I just remember the Juicy Fruit had a good one and then Double Mint Gum. Double in the world, it's double mint, double mint, double, double mint, mint gum. gum. And be like, double your flavor with double mint gum. And you're like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the twins are riding a bike, you know. <laughs> It's like these twins doing everything. And then there's another set of twins and they're playing tennis with each other. The gum commercials. I loved the soda commercials. Most uh, Coke and Pepsi, of course, had these great ad agencies. But I really loved, Rob, the Dr. Pepper commercial. I drink Dr. Pepper, don't you know? Oh, yeah. You know, David Naughton. David Naughton. Love it. And he's saying, making it. Anyway, I'm not singing. I've got the chance. I'm taking it. But great Dr. Pepper. You're like, I want to be a pepper. Right. So I love the soda. I'm a pepper. You're a pepper. He's a pepper. Wouldn't you like to be a pepper, too? It was so joyous. And he's doing this big old dance, this huge musical through the streets. And everybody's (laughs) spinning. And it's just like, yay. And I loved that Coke and Pepsi would come out with something new every six months. Like, okay, the kids are breakdancing now. You know, and then everyone's like (laughs) doing the worm with their thriller jackets on, drinking Pepsi. You know, Alfonso Ribeiro's suddenly on there. Yeah, the the Coke... um... Boy, that is an interesting study in marketing is there there are lots of documentaries and books out there about the cola wars, but the the whole um, advertising game that went on between Pepsi and Coke over the the decades is really fascinating. Like like you got Madonna, well we got Michael Jackson. Right. You know, it's just like <laughs> Exactly. So it's well, you, you know, it's just like it it was out of control. And um, I just remember there were so, it's strangely, there were so many um, different catchphrases that I kind of don't remember one. I do remember Coke is it. And then somebody would pose with a can with some driplets of water or some condensation. I remember Coke is it. But what were the other catchphrases for Coke and Pepsi? Pepsi generation. Yeah, there was the the Pepsi generation, which I, as I recall in the 80s, David mm-hmm. Bowie even like sold out Whoa. and was doing like I think the, the modern was love so large. you know Pepsi thing so. modern love and then the writing of Pepsi suddenly was very space age you know it was yeah. like <laughs> right. we are more you know tech right. than Coke is old yeah and like so we're the youth funny. we're we're the new generation and Coke is old yes. and dusty and, you and know. I think that was the Michael Jackson song Michael Jackson jackson song it was like we're in the pepsi generation. it was like to the billy jean bass line or something right. really silly and uh trademark by the way owned by coke and pepsi we're just i'm just talking about it yeah. coke and pepsi 
but we're anyway just, we're analyzing we're discussing we're just analyzing but anyway so the, the soda did and um let me ask it, you this though did mm-hmm. any of those ads influence you in your buying habits whether it was coke or pepsi i was not the person who bought but i was into old-fashioned movies and i love the old-fashioned so i liked coke because it seemed more uh, old-fashioned and traditional oh. Oh, okay. Pepsi. Now, I really liked Cherry Coke. I will say that. Guys. Oh, I love Cherry Coke. But I like Pepsi too. I I could take either. Like I'm fine with, I'm fine with it. You know, both of them to me are good. I will say though that I prefer both the old school way with sugar, not corn syrup. Worse. And I can totally taste the difference. Like you put corn syrup, Pepsi, and sugar Pepsi in front of me, and I will pick out the sugar every single time because there's a slight. I don't know. There's just a slight difference in the in the corn syrup. And when I watched all those ads, nothing mm-hmm. influenced me about you know buying a, a Coke or a Pepsi. I, liked, I actually liked the Shasta commercials. I want a pop. I want a Shasta. <laughs> and it would be all these colorful because I was really influenced by packaging, as you guys know. Right. And I would see all these colorful Shasta cans, and that influenced me. Like Shasta, wow, that's really colorful and interesting um so i i think i just liked when they would kind of pound the entire bottle completely and i'd be like how did i do that and a little piece of ice would just be falling down the sliding down the (laughs) the side yeah like it's a hot day and they're i would try to do that it would like go all over my face like carmine on laverne and shirley like his orange shoes like the (laughs) like the whole thing would just flow over my head but um i liked that now, do you remember what this is from? Sometimes you feel like a nut. Don't. Sometimes you don't. Do, oh, do, 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 do. Um, and Joy's got nuts. Peter Paul mm-hmm. mouth don't. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you. Yeah. I, let me tell you why I remember that. Why? Well, other than the fact that it played 247. Okay, fine. When I was in seventh grade mm-hmm. in chorus, we did a song. Commercials, their melody you love to sing. <gasps> Oh my gosh! They go what with other? Everything. Stop it! What and other ones were in it? It was uh, it was a medley, the commercials Love medley, it. right? So there's like you know seventy seventh graders all singing this, and oh it was it was the of course Alka Seltzer plop, and and you know you have alto sopranos, tenors, and what were you? And baritones. I was a uh, at that time I was an alto, so I, I was a soprano in my you chorus. Had, not why? Um, well, I, I eventually was a soprano in high you school. You can go all over the range now. But they mm-hmm. they stuck me as a I don't know why yeah. I was an alto, but um, they had the, the whole chorus broken down with the Alka Seltzer one. So like <laughs> over here, it was like plop plop, and then another group plop plop <laughs> fizz fizz. Like they what made I it all dramatic. Have given oh, to see you doing what this. A it is and then we did um uh the sometimes you feel like a nut we did um uh band-aid i am stuck on band-aids because band-aids stuck on me me. and there was there was another one now like what about reach out and touch someone that was pretty famous reach out and touch touch someone um yeah we did that wasn't a part of that raise your movie, hand but... if you're sure was good raise your hand raise, raise your, your hand, hand if you're sure, if you're sure. Uh, i liked that one everyone's like you know and it's so funny because you're like oh we're supposed to see big old bo stains in their <laughs> armpit and we don't i get it i get it and there's somebody in a meeting and somebody in a classroom and raising and your like, hand wow they're, they're sure. confident and what was the one made for a man or something like what was that strong enough for a man made for a woman by menon yeah it was a (laughs) menon speed stick and what about finger licking good uh kfc maybe you sung that in the chorus um did we i don't think so i i i got it you know what it'll come to me because now my head's all jumbled with like 29 different jingles because i'm throwing what about no you know what i bet you it was Hmm. oscar meyer oh yeah duh you're okay, right. So, You're right. Uh, I uh, wish I were an Oscar Mayer wiener. Boom, 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 <laughs> boom. That is I what I truly oh, like oh, to oh. be. Because <laughs> if I... 
What, what, what kind of outfit do you think you were wearing in that little half circle in the altos group? I know what I was wearing. I was wearing oh, no. a, well, you know, it was hideous because it was 1980. Oh my Stop, because I saw your seventh grade picture and you were adorable and I you was, looked so cute. Yeah, but look at my hair. I mean, it's your brutal. Your was perfect. It was anyway, that, what were you wearing? It was that hair. Okay, fine. Um, it was a button down with the crew neck sweater. And what the, color? The button down, I'm pretty sure, was like a peach color, like a light Ooh. pastel peach color. But uh, the sweater was maroon. <laughs> oh, can't can't say I love. And then wait, stop it, maroon and peach. Yeah, I'm telling oh, you, I was a I was a mess. So, and then right. I had a wool skirt that was actually my mother's skirt. Oh. And it was sort of an argyle pattern. Oh yeah. But it, of it, this was pastel blue and pink. And like some other color, like maybe yellow or something. And it had a hole in the seam, which I didn't know until well, nobody I could wore see it. it. Nobody could see no, it. No, no. Every that's how I found out. Everyone told me they could see Stop it. Stop it. Uh -huh, Wait, who said uh -huh, it? Okay, before uh -huh. we go on, who said Robbie, we can see the hole in the wool skirt? The parents of one of my friends. Get out of here. No. Nope. Were they neighbors? No. No. It was after the show. You know, so after the, I wish I were an Oscar Mayer plus. So you were singing about Oscar Mayer wieners and you had on a wool skirt of your mother's that mm -hmm. had a hole in the skin. And I had, okay, uh, okay. I had these solid wool knee high socks and clogs, navy blue clogs. And I did match my socks to my sweater. My socks were okay. maroon. So there, there okay. you go. I, I was styling. But yeah, after the show. Um, you know, everybody else goes out for pizza and stuff. And of course my family, you know, it's just like, nah, we're going home. So, okay. um, this one mother came up and was like, well, we're going out for pizza. Do you guys want to join us? And mm -hmm. my parents were like, no, nah, 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 nah. you know, they want to go home. And the one lady goes, honey, I wanted to tell you, you have a hole in your mm -hmm. skirt. And like, I was I would have squared up and said, excuse me. Yeah, I would have taken mortified. off my earrings and took her outside because how dare <laughs> she? Off your shoes. <laughs> how dare she say that to my special Rob during her performance? Well, I actually think she said it to embarrass my parents. That's my theory. Oh my gosh! Because they were saying. Right, sorry, right there. I'm getting obsessed. I think it's I so rude. Know, but you right? know what? Though speaking of Oscar Mayer, I watched that on YouTube. And the little boy, of course, is that little fisherman kid fishing off of a little dock. Yeah, why? Right. He's eating a bologna sandwich fishing. But his, first of all, the little bite in his sandwich is like so small. It looks like a tiny cookie cutter, little fake bite. <laughs> and it's not even a bite. Like in the bite, only the bread is bit. I'm like, that bite is not deep enough for him to even get bologna on it, by the way. So like the props department had It was to so bad. Whoever was the prop guy travis or trevor or whoever it's like some young guy in the 70s with a ponytail he needs to be fired. with a ponytail yeah cargo shorts and, then, and a ponytail and god love the kid he was an adorable child but he, he was singing with food in his mouth if you watch it today you're like wait a second the kid actually took a bite or something he's got like white stuff in his mouth like, ah, get, get, get. it's not so cute today <laughs> i mean he's adorable but i was like ooh. and then i watched the i feel like this is probably the most famous commercial that everybody our age knows life cereal you know mikey oh, he yeah. likes it and all that yeah. the two brothers are like oh, i'm not gonna try that disgusting healthy cereal let's let's let a little brother he eats that he eats bugs and dirt let's just have him eat this yeah. disgusting the cereal. kid the kid says what's for breakfast and the other kid goes i don't know some cereal supposed to be good for you right he goes, i'm not gonna eat it are you gonna eat it i'm not gonna I'm not eat gonna it try no i'm not gonna try it yeah you i'm not it. gonna try it hey let's get mikey yeah he'll eat it he hit, or no, he won't eat it. He hates everything. And then they give it to him, and Mikey starts scarfing it down like he hasn't eaten in a year. He likes it. Hey, Mikey. And the Mikey and kid like, is so cute. Mikey's like, fuck you guys. Like, he just looks so, like, he just does not care. Right. But Except the you know, thing uh, well, mm -hmm. I was just going to say, you know Mikey's eating it so fast because life cereal gets soggy in, like, three seconds. So you either have to keep pouring a crunchy dry layer over it, in order to I ate keep them yesterday. To... I ate cinnamon life yesterday. I don't know why I bought it. Like, how dare I? Yeah, but I wasn't the bottom like soggy by the time you got it? It was so soggy, but yeah, yeah. I just kept on. You it was know. good. I like life cereal, but I used to eat it by uh, continuously pouring a thin layer of dry over it, and then I would dump sugar all over it. 
you would dump sugar. Yeah. Well, I wonder if they kind of starved Mikey. Mikey was so <laughs> effing hungry. He's like, all I right, just not. give me the freaking bowl. I, isn't that illegal? But Some he kind was of so cruelty? little. I hope not. And I watched that commercial. He was so little. He had like lint in his hair. And, the, you know, like they didn't even brush the kid's hair. It was probably, you know, to show that they were rough and tumble little tykes. Yeah. But he had like a big old piece of blanket in his hair. Like he had like some lint. I was like, who is grooming these children for these these spots? But um, adorable kids. Well, they did kid. just wake up according to the commercial. They just woke up. Right. But you know, they did look like brothers. I mean, they had those little, they looked pretty similar. I was like, okay, they could be brothers, I guess. Yeah. But. People loved that commercial. And another one that um, I remember seeing a lot through the years was that Charmin. Like, oh, squeezing the Charmin. Charmin. Yeah. And they'd be like, they like could not stop themselves. What, they were what like, was oh, his oh, name? The, the Mr. Whipple. Mr. Whipple. <laughs> and he would be right there like, these bitches will not stop touching the toilet paper. You know, like the end cap. They like keep ruining his end cap. Right. They're all like, he's like, can you not squeeze the Charmin lady? Right. And then they would show you the stop. stacks next to each other. But if you notice, the stacks were old Charmin and new Charmin. And it was like same number of squares, except or oh, same number of sheets. But the the Charmin was like super thick and fluffy or something. Yeah. Well, the plight of the, the housewife back then was basically, if you were a housewife, you were squeezing Charmin in the store you were trying to get your kids to eat healthy with this life cereal. And then mm-hmm. like you had this awful day with like Tide trying to get grass stains out and whatnot. Right. And you were also trying and to stay thin. Trying to stay thin. You couldn't eat anything and you eat some figurines. But and, but at the end of your day of like trying to force people to eat things they didn't want, doing their laundry, like being a slave, you had Calgon. And do you remember the tagline? Calgon, take me away. <laughs> All these burdens, all these like awful burdens would be like gone when you dumped a bunch of cal- was Calgon a powder, do you think? I don't remember. Well, was it they, like a bag? they had a uh, there was Calgon um laundry detergent that was early How in the seventies. Funny, okay. And that had a commercial that like you can't even talk about that commercial nowadays with this Stop just, it. You know, sensitivities and, and Okay. I mean, it's just, you can't even. It's um, just wrong. Yeah. But um, okay. But then then later, they had the Calgon, um, it was like bath salts, you know, like a yes. bubble bath. Yeah. And you dump it in, you're like, oh, Calgon. And like, the mom's ignoring all the cries, like, mom, the house is burning down. <laughs> She's like, shut up, I'm in the bath. Mom, I'm so, starving. Yeah, and Calgon. And I feel like in these commercials, and then what about Madge? She was so rude. She's like, your hands are, isn't, wasn't there like a manicurist named Madge? Yeah, that was Palm, Palm Olive. Olive. Right. And, and she's and... basically like, your hand feels like sandpaper, you old bag. You know, you need <laughs> this. Cause I feel like moms were just so beat up on these, oh, oh, yeah, these totally. commercials. Well, well, yeah, because it was this, it was. You're so cute. That went back to the 50s, right? Where it was mm-hmm. like. Um, you know, the ads weren't weren't threatening to men. Like, Mm-mm. if you don't provide for your family, you're no good. And you know, there, you didn't see those ads. But for women, no. it was like, if you don't stay thin, if you don't like make a good that, enough dinner, if you don't keep the house like clean enough, cooking. you don't get those your stains hands, out. Yeah, your hands are like, a, your hands are rough. No one likes your cooking. You have to trick them into eating things. Right, right. I mean, come on. What's going on with these poor women? Right, makeup, clothes. I know. It just, it's all, but, but you know, that's why, because mm-hmm. women make most of the household purchasing decisions day to day, right? So Very good. Yeah, thought. so, like, when you're looking at things like laundry detergent, dish, de- dish detergent, food, um, deodorant, you know, all that stuff. And it's stuff. just so funny, though, that the way they did commercials, you know, it'd be like Sandy Duncan with some wheat thins, like staring right One at the camera. after the other. She would, she would stare right at the camera a lot of these commercials. If you want to make a snack, eat some wheat thins, put something on top. They're just talking right to you, and it's funny. Um, I feel like I don't even remember the, the commercials now, but they're just very sleek, and it's like some, you know, Matthew McConaughey voiceover on some, like, Lexus on an open road somewhere or some soft rock song. <laughs> You know, I, I don't know, or a really, really um, hip Target commercial where everyone's doing cartwheels or some kind of old Navy. But back then, Sandy Duncan is sitting in like her den talking about wheat thins right to the camera. Right. Right. Or or like grape nuts, you know, 
Just some guy going, ah, I'm, I'm a no-nonsense kind of a guy, and I eat grape nuts. You ought to eat grape nuts, too. You know, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, it, it's so funny the way they tried to just tell you, this is really good, and the, and the reasoning was always horrible. It was like some awful thing that nobody researched. <laughs> it was just funny. You're like, really? That's that's the that's gonna be it, huh? You know, like the old, 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 old cigarette ads where it was like, doc, four out of five doctors recommend this brand. You're like, do they though? You're do like, they? Wait, what? I don't know about that. You're like, I don't know. And you know what's funny about the toy commercials? So you liked the toy commercials in between your cartoons? Oh yeah, I I loved. And you kind of like made it. a mental note, like I need to ask for that for Christmas. Yeah, because it was sort of like, um, it was like. Pinterest today, right? Like I'd sit and watch uh, my Saturday morning interest. lineup. Yeah. And then I would see all these cool toys that I wanted. And um, and then once you get into the after school reruns, the ads got a little bit. Um, well, they were for dinner. And stuff. Yeah, they, like, they were skewed like a little bit older. Or, but then I would cool still age. see stuff I wanted, like Love's Baby Soft or, or you know, some hair stuff or whatever and what did you think of the big old kool-aid guy like breaking through the wall were you like how did his glass not break or did you just no i just him? i knew oh, okay. i knew it was a guy wearing a big plastic kool-aid You're like, That's picture Kool-Aid. yeah i didn't yeah it was but it's funny because then they kind of made during the soap operas when when the mothers would be watching it'd be some lady talking straight to the camera with a pitcher some kind of tupperware or oh no it was always glass and she'd have her wooden spoon and she'd go, only 12 cents if I add my own sugar. <laughs> right. you know, it was like this great bargain. 12 like, cents Is a gallon. It though? Really? Right. Yeah. So it, they'd kind of change it up. Okay. For the kids, let's do this character. And then for the moms, let's talk about the bargain, the value. My, you know. my poor mother. Shout out, mom. Mm-hmm. So mom would, she would get the Kool Aid, always cherry, because oh, I, I wouldn't drink so anything else. Great. And oh. she would make lemonade for herself. Um, nice. Country time lemonade. And the country so time uh, it came already sweetened. So you just okay. dumped that in and mixed it up. But the Kool-Aid, of course, was the little packet of red food dye. Of course. <laughs> and like some artificial flavoring. And then you would dump the sugar in. So what I would do, of course, mom, she would think she was doing me a favor by only adding like half the recommended cup of sugar or whatever it was. And I would take a sip and be like, Bleh. so then when mom wasn't looking or you know, was like outside or whatever, I would then dump another, you know, cup of sugar into the pitcher in the refrigerator and stir it up. So mom is thinking, wow, this is sweet and good. It's tastes just as good. And there's half as much sugar. And I'd be like, uh-huh. Yep. <laughs> I see you guys making these little, I, I picture you on, um, you know, when the villain kind of looks around the corner and does a little giggle, I picture exactly. you doing that after you did it. Exactly. But yeah, so the, there's like the mom commercial. Yeah. I, I remember that country time had that little cross stitch pattern. Uh-huh. I liked uh-huh. that little, that neat thing. But yeah, it was funny because we'd see these things and we'd go, mom, mom, mom. But the, the kid toy commercials, they would be like, we girls can do anything, right, Barbie? And Barbie would be like just in a spa. You're like, girl, can can we do right. anything? Right. We All can, we're doing is working out with the Jane Fonda outfit. We can lay in a bathtub. <laughs> yeah, you're like, can we though? But yeah, the Barbie. Um, I remember looking at the hair and how they would barely hold the Barbie by the bottom legs and barely. I'm like, that's not how I move my Barbie. Like mine would be like doing stuff and their Barbie would be like all perfect. Yeah. Kind of moving it, like just tilting it back and forth so the hair won't move. I so did the, I covet the accessories though. I coveted all of the add-ons. Like, like remember the tower with the elevator? I got that for Christmas one year. Well, um, I got that too because it was inexpensive compared to that dream house because the back of it was just a big old piece of cardboard. Right, right. So and it was more affordable. Do you know I when got. I got mine, because of course this is my life, right? When I got mine, it was missing one of the pillars, one of those white pillars that you, you that hold it up. Me. No, and I was so upset. I would have cried. We were at my grandma. Oh, I did cry. We were at yeah. my grandma's. And we opened up all our gifts on Christmas morning. And here's my big gift, you know, the Barbie townhouse. 
And I, I was all over it. And so my dad is helping me put it together. And we're looking all over the place. And it's just missing this one pillar. And, oh, I was so upset. I was livid. Because the whole thing. Please tell me they tried to rig it with some kind of random thing. Let's measure one nope, of the pillars. You put... know, my dad, he's, like, looking at it. And my dad, um, he, he was in construction and rigging and stuff. Right. So he, like he knew how to do a lot of things and so he disappears i'm up in the one room with my cousin michelle hey shout out michelle um and i'm i'm just apoplectic what was grandma helen saying about all this uh oh grandma no she was she was like downstairs cooking like always okay nobody cared you know it was like to me it was a it was a heinous tragedy and so I would have dad, been like, where's the paper towel roll? Get over here. That's exactly what my dad did. He comes oh, upstairs. Okay. No, he comes oh, upstairs you, like, you know, like completely triumphant. And he's just sticks this paper towel roll in where the other pillar should be. And it, and my my Barbie do, my Barbie townhouse forever mm-hmm. after had this paper towel roll stuck there because. Stop it. A janky. Did you try to. It was totally oh my janky. Gosh. But um, but, you know. That's all right. I had, you know, I had the janky jeans. I had the janky sweater. I had janky everything. You had the bootleg. Yep. The kickstand version of that. Uh, right. Little kickstand version of the condo. Yeah. <laughs> I would try to shove too many Barbies in that little elevator. It clearly yeah. had room for one. And I'd be like, wait a second. We can, we can get Marie Osmond in here. Yeah. And, you the, know, string, and then get all the string like got all tangled up. And, and mm-hmm. eventually I had to cut it. And then my dad tried to rig up another thing in there. Yeah, it was a whole um and the but, furniture but was on all the commercial furniture. on the commercial it's pristine and perfect and you're like it's lit like it's this <laughs> the ritz carlton yeah. you know and you're like, it's got wow. like wow designer lighting <laughs> and these three Donald's. girls are playing and, and they're like all friends and their hair is perfect you're like wow they're not even fighting over who gets to be barbie yeah and there's no like, what like no one has dirt on their face from playing outside like i always like, did what is ha- like my sister and i would both get a barbie and i'd be like i'm sorry you're, you're going to have to name her as PJ. She's like, but mine's <laughs> named Barbie. I'm like, no, there's only one Barbie, mine. You know, and then like I'd get like a new Barbie. You know, I'd have Golden Dream Barbie, which was the gold lame one. And then I'd get, you know, Pink and Pretty the next year. That would be new Barbie. And the other one was Barbara. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd like, re, or, or Barb. You know, I'd like have to rename them. I my never sister, named mine Barbie. My sister could not ever have the name. She got designer jeans fashion jeans barbie sorry that's pj yeah she was just like and later on when i apologized to her I'm like oh my god i was a monster i'm so sorry she's like that just meant so much to you she's like i just take care of that much <laughs> i was like oh my god was she's like, like oh. all an adult <laughs> like, she was like you she was what? like you were so obsessed like yours had to be barbie i was like whatever you know <laughs> like, i'm so sorry but yeah the commercials were great because they showed you things you did not know existed yeah, because of course you're not at the store. You're not strolling Toys R Us. Well, and if you I are, mean, unless you're really lucky, you don't really see it because it's not out on display, right? It's like a box, and you're not really sure. But, but the interesting thing about all that Barbie stuff was, like you said, they would show these perfect little girls, mm-hmm. you know, and all and always like white girls, you know. There, there was mm-hmm. no diversity in Barbie Land, and they would show these girls playing, and they would show them having so much fun with some Barbie accessory. And the reality was, it was only about 30 seconds worth of interest, right? Like, how much fun can you have with Barbie in her Jeep or whatever it is? Like, okay, she's going to drive over here. All right. You know, like... You know, it's funny. Yeah. You're like, wait a second. This doesn't really last. And I would notice that with Matchbox Cars and He-Man and Castle Grayskull, you know, they have a toy where something launches a little cannon. Yeah. And on the commercial, you're like, Wow. But when you go play with the boys down the street and it launches a cannon, you're like, okay, well, we can either keep launching this damn cannon or we <laughs> can eat the Fritos. Didn't yeah. your neighbor have like the Fritos that you loved so much? Oh, yeah, Scotty. Scotty had Scotty the, uh, would, like, be like, the oh, little individual Frito Fritos? bags and, and the Pepsi. We would you watch. more Fritos? We, we launched this cannon 50 times. You know, So it's, it's funny because right. the commercial as a kid, you're like, this is amazing. Yeah, I mean, how many baths can Barbie take? You know, how many, how many times can you go up and down that elevator? Like... I I just I I would I would grow tired of it and that's your backstory though for your Barbie did you have any backstory um 
Well, yeah, I never named him Barbie. I usually okay. named my Barbies Jill after Farrah Fawcett okay, and Charlie, you know, and Jill Charlie's Monroe. Angels. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Um, they were never me, but my Barbies were always, they were always kind of independent and sometimes they had a job and sometimes they were just were models or something. But How cute. they were, I don't know, I, I didn't. Really, it wasn't an extension of you and what you could do in the world. No, no, not at all. And I think I never played with them for more than you know an hour at a time or so. If I had a friend over, we might interact with them and like pretend mm -hmm. they were going out or you know or something like that. But it was never it was never like eight hours of play. The thing that that was like eight hours of play for me, which was another commercials. Mm -hmm. um, you know, influence too was the Kenner Star Wars mini action figures. Oh wow, yes, Tamar because, had that whole thing. Yeah, it was all uh, shout out Tamar. So it was all like all these accessories, and the accessories were super cool. You know, like they were the, very well made. Yeah, the Millennium Falcon. It wasn't like beautiful. This, cheap crap blow up stuff what was it that was whole space center with like the trash garbage pit and the oh that was that was the death star that. yeah the death star. death star she had that and there was like this foam pit yeah it was the the accessories that came with those kenner dolls and all the little kenner dolls um i mean there were so many like you know every single minor character it wasn't just you know, leia and luke and han oh, they were it was beautifully like, made yeah i i loved those and so I would take them all outside and build these whole like worlds. That's where in the it got forest. good. If you, the second you took your toys out of the house, yes, and did a storyline, that's when you could go mm -hmm. crazy. That's when I would spend hours and hours. And I did. There were times where like my friend and I would take our Barbies because um, we lived on like a water, uh, like a quarry. We would oh, take our Barbies nice. down to the quarry, you know, and they'd be like swimming and stuff. And yeah, there that if it if there's outside play involved and when you w when you saw the commercials for all that mm -hmm. star wars stuff i mean it was all over it was like look at that x-wing fighter i gotta have that you know and look at this oh, and it that was, it was so great yeah same with the fisher price ones like every time they came out with something like the castle they came out with the castle when i was a little kid and um holy crap i had to have that thing and I, I remember had the Sesame Street uh, little brownstone. Oh, that was cool. That the little because um, it was like a couple of brownstones right mm -hmm. together, and and there and was, there was a, a handle on top. Yeah. yeah, and you open it. And, that was a really like, cool one. Yeah, it was really cool. So the castle, I don't even remember the castle. I remember the school. There's like a schoolhouse and a little parking garage. Yeah, those were which really good, old. Those were the like car 60s. Would spin yeah. all the way to the bottom. I didn't see that on a commercial though. I just somebody handed that down to me. I have a feeling. I remember, well, I remember the commercials for the garages, but they were, they were like old, older designs. Mm -hmm. The, in the 70s, they came up with this, um, you know, castle and there was a king and a queen. There was a pink dragon and nice. it had a little moat. And then it had like this thing, like one of the turrets would open up um, to the side and, you know, it was actually really cool. And I have to look that up. Yeah. And there was a, there were um, a little knight and a horse and stuff and a little Did you princess. Have weebles? Remember Weebles? <laughs> yeah. Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. Weebles they annoyed wobble, me. But they don't I was fall like, down. Ah, I like wanted them to fall down. I was like, this is not, this is like the laws of physics being, uh, I, I don't know. I they, just, they, they wouldn't fall down though. You couldn't make it I fall hated down. that though. Yeah. It bothered me yeah, greatly. Like you just, I liked the haunted house. The Weebles haunted house was cool. With like yeah, a, some kind of tree house, ghost with weevil. little swings. Oh my god, the family tree house. Yes, it's the family oh, that tree thing was cool. house. That Wait, was so an the ad. Family tree house. Describe that to me. Was that a plastic tree that you could push down and up? Yes. Okay, yeah, it and was then like it was a big up, round. A little... Yeah, it was a round top okay. tree, that and you would was push cool. it down and pop it, and then the the yes. the greenery would lift, and there was the, the little house. Lift. That the family, you know, the little Kenner tree family lived in. And there were swings in there. I just remember little swings. Maybe, oh, I thought it was Weebles. Okay, no. Yeah, no, it wasn't Weebles. But that thing was cool. They were Anything like square. That had square like people. buttons or that you could open. Yes. I was impressed. I was like, okay. Yeah. I am sold. I am your customer. Yeah. And when you would see 
these kids in the ads like mm -hmm. you know and and of course nothing ever worked like it did like no no i i have a friend my friend billy mm -hmm. hi billy he got a mousetrap game this past year for christmas oh wow and the son of a bitch worked We've talked about mousetrap. Mine yeah. always works. Oh my god, my, I I must have had three, never worked. three different mousetraps, and they they never oh, worked. worked. They never worked. You know, and then I go to a friend's house who had mousetrap, didn't work. I've never seen a mousetrap. Mine work. worked from when I was four years old. It never didn't work. It always worked. I don't know what that's all about. I don't know. I, I it's a mystery. I, I always look at that game like like you give it a side eye. Yeah, exactly. Like, it was scary. a total side eye. But you know what was funny is mm -hmm. I accused Billy of making it up, and I said I said you need to take video. So he videoed the thing on his cell phone, and he posted he it really. on social media. And there were so many people going, "Oh my God, mine never worked!" Like <laughs> you have got to be kidding me. I felt like mine was so solid. Yeah, I that don't little know. guy always ended up. The little guy on the diving board always ended up in the barrel. Never. Was that where you just went wrong? No, never. The, the. Where did your start to go wrong? Um, it was always the somewhere... ball go down the stairs. Yeah, it was somewhere in the middle process where the ball was supposed to be, you know, like going down a chute or whatever it was, and then it would fall off or the chute oh, the would ball collapse. Or yeah, the, it was always a. But some... your guy never even jumped off the diving board. No. No, because oh, the ball the ball never actually dropped and like, you know, hit the lever that made it go bang, bang, bang. Oh like, my gosh. So something was probably wrong with that ball. It wasn't heavy enough. Yeah. But you know what that brings up a good point though, is the commercials for board games. Did your family ever play board games? Oh, they actually did. Wow. They actually did. Which board Not games? Not all the time. Well, we played life and I remember thinking, Okay, this is totally complicated. What is insurance? You know, I was like, I don't get it. <laughs> We played Monopoly, and I was like, okay, I get this. I want to accumulate property. I got that right away, and I made my Barbie, like, totally into real estate. Real estate. I was like, okay, she needs to own property. <laughs> so I got um, Monopoly, but we had games where my parents could kind of cop out and be like, yeah, you guys go play that Connect Four. You know, like something that was just my sister and I, like right. Battleship and Connect Four. Like, my parents would scoot out. Or trouble. Papa Maddox moves the dice, Papa six, and you move twice. I never had trouble, but we did have the game that gave me anxiety, which is Perfection, which I think we've spoken of. <gasps> I love I love perfection. that middle piece, that perfect circle in the middle. But when it popped, I got so freaking scared, and I knew it was coming. Yeah, it that was a total anxiety. And when, when the thing oh, was going, like, right, the like, time was ah! going, and you're like rushing to Your try to get all the pieces rate, yeah. in place. Yeah, that, that like one had a great right jingle, too. Perfection. And then I had, when your mom really doesn't want to play games with you, you get Simon for Christmas. <laughs> beep, boop, beep. And I quite liked it because I loved buttons. You know, anything that lit beep, up with a button. Beep, I was like, okay, beep, I like beep, buttons. Beep, 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 beep. Uh, uh, like, I'm a loser. <laughs> did but you I have, liked. Did you have, what? we're totally not talking about commercials anymore. The, hey, there was a commercial for that. Did you uh, have Speak and Spell? Of course. Miro. Actually, no, my sister Miro. had the math speak and spell. I didn't have speak and spell. She had the math. And of course, I, I claim all of her toys as mine. Did you, and, make, and mine did you make speak hmm. and spell say booby? <laughs> of course. Of course. Booby. Booby and hell. It booby. always said hell also. B O O B I E. <laughs> booby. <laughs> but yeah, you see these commercials for what I'm you were supposed laughing. to do with the toy. And then you'd build like a rocket ship and like that's the buttons on the dashboard and Simon is like the, the go and the stop button for the rocket, you know? <laughs> the commercial would tell you what you were supposed to do. Right. And then you would be like, okay, I'm playing dentist and the parts from Mousetrap are going to be the things that I use to extract teeth from your mouth, you know? <laughs> that, yeah, that's a good point, especially with Mousetrap. Um, I think I had two different versions of it because of course the first one didn't work so then I got another version like the following you know my birthday's in February and mm. so if if something if there was a miss or a mm. bum gift on at Christmas except for that condo they were like we know, are not buying another no, condo no, I, I had to live with the janky condo oh, sorry. but <clears throat> yeah I got another version of Mousetrap and that still didn't work so for years pieces and parts of mousetrap would turn up in other projects like in my star wars land 
you know, totally. it'd be like mouse a ladder that went from this little mossy rock up to a so thing. So smart of you. Yeah, yeah, I was always. I was, and but, that little barrel, that little barrel could be, you know, used oh, yeah. for many things. Yeah, that was. There were just a million uh, different pieces, parts, and that was that was a huge like, oh no, Robbie, with my mother because mm-hmm. I would make a disastrous mess somewhere because yes. I would build an entire. I was building like sets basically. I would build these tiny of little course. sets of stuff and towns and you know empires and all this I shit. I buried my Play-Doh barbershop <laughs> literally underground. <laughs> I don't know why. I think it's because we wanted to unearth a treasure so i'm like well i better get a treasure in the ground for us to unearth and that you was know? your that was your treasure was your, your was the, Play-Doh was the, Play-Doh, uh, the, yeah, the poor play-doh barbershop with those dudes with the long hair that you would cut with those scissors which was a great commercial by the way yeah and you you'd press put the but you put the cap on right and then squeeze it and, and the cap would mold no, this it, is it into okay a... so it was the shape of a a dome the whole guy who sits in the barber chair chair was uh hollow so you shove a bunch of Play-Doh inside the guy, and the guy had little holes on his head. When you press him down on the barber chair, his the, hair grew yeah. like a hippie. Yeah, and then you could then, cut it. But you could cut it, but you could also take a mold that they oh, gave yeah, you. Oh, yeah, a mold, yes. And okay. it, was like a, it was like a helmet on a hinge, and you would just full on, you'd put yeah. it over his head. And then when you push down on him, the Play-Doh would push up through the holes in his head and then it would mold right. into like a good description. You know, and then like he a looked hair like helmet. one of the, of the cast of Welcome Back Cotter. Yes. Yes. And it was awesome. So I buried all those people and the whole shop underground. <laughs> Did you ever so dig it up? Um, I don't I think it's still there. It's, still there. it's in the valley. So someone, all I know, someone's gonna find it and be like, "What the?" <laughs> my mom's oh no, Amy was when I was like, "I need a Tupperware bowl because I need a Barbie pool and I need to dig a hole, <laughs> get the pool in the ground at ground level, so Barbie can go swimming." Because I had um, um, C- Malibu Christy. Mm-hmm. She was Barbie's African American friend, gorgeous pink bikini. I remember. And I asked yeah, I remember her. Christy. I was like, I need Christy. She is glamorous and she was serving up so much eleganza anyway so i make this i'm like well she's got this bikini i need a pool so anyway but you know I that's see- pretty so how old were you then i was probably eight see now that is pretty damn smart at eight years old to engineer like first of all i have to dig a hole but i can't just fill the hole with water i have to have a bottom oh, i tried that first see i tried that first and i'm like oh, oh it's oh, mud okay. I'm like, oh <laughs> mud okay no i need a tupperware so I'd go and get the I Tupperware, and then I was I could not get it like the the dynamics or the the measurements, the metrics correct. But yeah, in the commercial, she's in a pool, and I'm like, okay, my mom's not going to buy me that cool pool. Yeah, so I never I'm have had to build a Barbie one. pool. So the commercials, I think they gave us a great um, suggestion, but you know, it was really up to us to take it to the next level. Yeah, yeah, and that's where they that's where you'd see the fine print: accessories not included. Or and then they start finally saying, don't try this at home. Like <laughs> after, you know, people like me who would do something crazy. Or like on a on a food box where it says serving suggestion because they added like strawberries and garnish and stuff. Like, no, that's right? not in the box. Serving suggestion. Were there I, any I, um, hmm. were there any commercials that made you not want to get something? Like all of those uh, ones, like the Wilford Brimley oatmeal kind of that oh, were yeah. geared for like older people. I was like, nope, I want the swatch watch looking tech colorful, unless it was an old fashioned 40s thing. I know those are two opposites, but I liked those kind of themes, mm-hmm. but I didn't want to be some old guy sitting on my porch with diabetes. You know what I mean? <laughs> Not diabetes, but diabetes. Correct. And, diabetes. And, God love them, but I just was like, no, yeah. it's not for me. I'm not. I'm not the one. R.I.P. Wilford Brimley. He was a great actor. He. I know. I remember really him was. from Absence of Malice. He played. He had a very small part, but he just played the best character. He he was a gem, just a a gem of an act. I mean, I don't know what he was well, like as a person. Speaking but. of serial, can you finish this jingle? Because I feel like they but might I still can. play this. A is for Apple. B is for Jax. 
No. Wait, isn't it J is for Jack? J is for J. Is J is for Jack. <laughs> Cinnamon and toasty <laughs> apple jacks. jacks. You need a good breakfast. That's a fact. A fact. Started mm-hmm. off with apple jacks. Oh, is that how it goes? Bees and then how did jacks. Fruit Loops go? <laughs> Follow your nose wherever it goes. Something like Toucan Sam. He's still around, right? Uh, you know what? I don't know, but let me tell you, mm-hmm. I freaking loved apple jacks. I I could eat a whole box. I once bought those because the word apple was in it. She's like, oh, there's apple. But they you know. Had- it, well, yeah, and the apple was really just these little sugary, like weird well, tiny, red tiny, things, so small, yeah, the like red little thing. candies or something. But there, there was frosting. They were orange on the apple jacks, like yeah. the Fruit Loops. They, they, they were good, but they didn't have the Too the sugary sugar coating that apple jacks did. And like when you had a bowl of apple jacks, the the strawberry ish cherryish whatever that fake flavor was the milk it was so it was like sweet for gum yeah it was like uh-huh. strawberry quick oh yeah i loved apple jacks what? i remember getting alpha bits i remember seeing a commercial for alpha bits alpha bits, alpha bits. yeah yeah they were, those were good too same thing they had like a little frosted layer they were they were cheerios though basically i think and um, then there was tricks which was the crazy rabbit tricks are for kids right. that was a super super famous jingle as was lucky charms Oh um, yeah, what was it? Was magically delicious. That was that's magically one of the delicious. biggest ones. And then frosted flakes with Tony the Tiger. There, there like right. that was. Good. So you know what? I think the cereal commercials have the most famous jingles. I think it was the fast food. Do yeah. you? Yeah, because I remember the Burger King commercials in the seventies. Like there was the infamous. Um, bicentennial one i think i sang that in one of our earlier the episodes. burger king king was kind of like you know there was ronald mcdonald and his whole hr puff and stuff land and then there was like the burger king that was their little guy you know yeah he had a couple of design changes though i remember there was like the sexy burger king guy the hot guy with the he was like a he had a beard a mustache and he was like in shape and then there was this have it your um, there was like a fat um, a cartoon Burger King guy, that I, mm. and I don't know which was first, um, mm-hmm. you know. But but he went through a change, and then there was no Burger King, like there was no yeah, no guy. I don't remember. Like, and just... I know that Wendy's probably did one of the most famous, obviously, whereas the beef was oh, yeah. super super famous and cute. Um, yeah, but that was kind hammer. of more eighties. But um, what were the what was another um? Well, the Burger King had the um, hold the pickles, hold the lettuce, special orders don't upset us. All you have to do is let us have it your way, have it your way. And then McDonald's had the mm-hmm. two all beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions, and a sesame seed bun. And then yes. the kids would all like like get into that and like try to wrap it or you know. Yes. Okay, yeah. that's so true. Yeah. The so there was Wendy's. There was Wendy's. Oh, what about Jack in a Box? I know that they did a very successful. The guy they have now is actually very clever. You know, Jack with the big old ball, the white ball. Head. You know, we don't have those around here. So, oh, they're um, super cute. I think you, if we do, you guys have Hardee's or something. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't even think. All right, I've we'll forget seen Jack one. in a Box. Um, but they're really big out west, though, aren't they? And in the south. Maybe? Oh yes, the major. Yeah, like we don't but, have uh, white but castles I do know here either. KFC, you have a right. For chicken done right. <laughs> you know, and you'd be like, yeah, 11 herbs and spices. You're like, yeah. But anyway, yeah, I just loved commercials. I loved that there were these little packages of a song and they were colorful and there's always people dancing. And I, I loved commercials. I did not see it as some awful thing. Yeah, there was a real sense of if you buy this, you are going to be so freaking happy mm-hmm. that you're actually going to start dancing and singing. Like right, whatever I, it was, right? deodorant, hamburgers, uh-huh. you know, whatever it was. And the car ads, um, they they were interesting because if you look at old car ads, a lot of them are kind of the same, you know, where it's just the car on the road. And yes. then and then at, at a certain point, people started getting clever with the car ads and um, in the late seventies, early eighties, you know, they started to kind of try to differentiate and and be more clever. I think, and that's where you got like this isn't your grandfather's Oldsmobile, 
like not your grandfather's Oldsmobile. Oh, that's good. I don't remember that, but that's a great. Um, Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it was, it was real big, I think in the early eighties and you know, and then that spawned all these people saying, oh, it's not your grandfather's whatever, you know, like mm-hmm. they all say that now. But um, the car ads, I think they've gone back to, you know, when I think of car ads now, none of them stand out to me. Like not it's one. all just these shiny vehicles. It's Matthew McConaughey voiceovering <laughs> you know on what? the road. That's the only one that stands out, to be honest. It, you know, and that, and because they're so bizarre, like what the hell is he talking about? But you know, he's Matthew McConaughey, and he's driving this Lincoln. Like those are super effective. Oh, ads. Is it Lincoln? I thought it was Lexus. Yeah, I, um, I just they're just boring. Yeah, they're just boring. yeah, because it's like a it's either a shiny car um, going down some curvy mountain road, or they're or it, or they're driving in the salt flats. Um, or it's like the open road of like uh, the desert. Also. Yeah, exactly. Or it's like. Uh, route 66 or something like that yes and they're yes. just you know um i i, I don't know I, I i get anxiety because i'm like if they break down where is there a mechanic where is the bathroom stop like i don't like that you know yeah i don't know yeah it doesn't influence me though i you know that's that's something else to talk about but you know what aim we're out of time Oh, I know. I know. I know. I love you, I, Rob. I, I could do a better job of like signaling us, but all of a sudden I look at our timer and I'm just like, oh my gosh, we've been yammering about this for like almost an well, hour. Well, can I, can I ask the magic eight ball something? Hells yeah. I got it right okay. here. Shaking it. Are Robbie and Amy peppers? <gasps> Cause you know, we want to be a pepper. Are we peppers? Are we peppers? Yes, definitely. Okay, good. Yes. I drink Dr. Pepper, don't you know? It's the original taste that I love so. And the taste is making peppers everywhere I go. There's root and peppers, toot and peppers, shoot and peppers. And wouldn't you like to be a pepper too? To be a pepper, drink Dr. Pepper. Yes. Wasn't he cute? He was so cute. Oh, he was so cute. He had a little vest on. Right, right. Our, our little American werewolf in London. Ah, yes. Making it. I've got the... Got Shout the out, chance. David Naughton. Taking it. Oh, my gosh. So this was super fun. I'm sure we Yay, will talk about but... commercials again at some point because, you oh, know... There's so many. Yeah, and, and it was such a childhood, um, you know, soundtrack and, and a part of all of our lives. Um, but uh, until next time, you guys, remember, we are on Twitter glitter b girls and we're on instagram glitter b girls we also have a website glitterboomgirls.com and uh, there's some funny pictures on there of of aim oh in fact on our website aim i Mm. have a photo from said christmas with my barbie townhouse oh my gosh yes so you guys go to glitterboomgirls.com and check out the gallery and you will see robbie looking like she's in the facts of life right my my cousin and me (laughs) Oh, God. That one school picture of you in what tenth grade? That's so like b- facts of life. Oh, anyway, with carry this on. sweater over my shoulder. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I don't know how that happened because every other school picture I took was so such a nightmare. Um, but yeah, so wherever you're listening to us now, we're we're on our podcasts are on YouTube and Spotify and Apple, and also on the website. So we love you guys. Hit us up. Let us know what you'd like to talk about. And uh, what you think of our of our uh, ridiculous um, pontifications? <laughs> and uh, until next time, um, I'll say goodbye. I'm Robbie Ann McPherson on the East Coast, and I'm Amy Asbury on the West Coast. Thanks, you guys. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye.